Hi everyone. Today I am on the church steps and Natalie is here. Hi Natalie. It's great to have you back. Now I think last time you came we had just started to look at God's rescue plan. Yes. That's right isn't it? So would you like to um, read it to us? Because I think we ought to remind ourselves of what this says. God's rescue plan to get his children back and make the world their perfect home again. That's right. Do you remember when God made the world and he made Adam and Eve the first people, but they did not do what God wanted them to do, did they? And they disobeyed him and so they had to leave the garden and God had to find a way to put that right again, which is why he made his rescue plan. So ooh, let's see what's next, Natalie. God's rescue plan to make all the wrong things right and to do it through a family. Yes, that's right. God chose Abraham, if you remember. And then there was Abraham and his son Isaac and his son Jacob and his son Judah and so on. And of course, it was Jacob's son Joseph who rescued the people um, when they were in that famine and took them to it went to live in Egypt but of course things went wrong there over the years and then God sent Moses to rescue the people and then they went off into the desert on their long journey to the promised land that God had promised Abraham. What does it say next Natalie? God's rescue plan to prepare his people for a great king who was coming. That's right, because many years later, the people decided they wanted to have a king. First king was Saul, and oh, he was a bad king, naturally. But God chose David to be king, because he was a, a man who had a heart full of love, just like God has a heart full of love. And he was going to prepare the people for God's rescue plan, the time that God was going to send a greater king to rescue his people. What's next, Natalie? God's rescue plan to rescue his people, not to punish them, to wipe away every tear from every eye. And that's right, because there were lots of kings after David. Some were good, some were bad. And then, as we heard last week in the story of Daniel, it was a sad time for the people, Natalie, because they had been um, taken from their, captured and taken from their own land to a far off country Babylon and well it was really sad for them but God hadn't left them because God was going to rescue them. Now there was a man called Nehemiah and he'd heard that the walls of Jerusalem had fallen down and he was very sad about this so he went to the king to ask him if he could take some people to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. Well God made the king say yes, and off they went with Ezra the priest. Now, this one day, Ezra gathered the people together and he got out the book of the law, which contained all the rules that God had given Moses to give to the people when they were in the wilderness. As the people listened and they heard the rules, they realised something. They realised that they would not been keeping these rules. They had been cruel and selfish and they were not living as God wanted them to live. And when Ezra looked, they had tears in their eyes and there were tears rolling down their cheeks. We've blown it this time. They said, God is going to punish them. They thought that's what God was going to do, but they were wrong. They didn't realise that God was going to rescue them. Now, they could have had a clue from Ezra's name, which means help is here, or even Nehemiah, which means God will wipe away every tear, just like what it says in the plan. So they could have had a clue with that, couldn't they? But they didn't. And so they were feeling very, very sad. But Nehemiah, Ezra closed the book and he said, Let's have a party. So they did. Uh, it was a week long party, a very long one. And Ezra said, God wants his people to be happy, not sad. And so the people thought about, about this. 
and they listened to all the wonderful stories that Ezra told them of how God had looked after them. All the things we've talked about as we talked about the rescue plan. They listened carefully to all these things. You see, God wanted to rescue his people because he loved them. He never stopped loving them. He never gave up on them. Even though time after time, and over and over again, they did the wrong thing. But God did not give up on them. And, well, the time was coming that God was going to send the rescuer, and they needed to get ready. God himself was going to come, not to punish his people, but to rescue them. God was getting ready to whip away every tear, and the true party was just about to begin. <laughs> oh, I think it's so amazing, God's rescue plan. Don't you, Natalie? Yes, I do. Yeah. And what does that story teach us, Sandy? Oh, well, do you know, I think I am going to give us an example. We're going to pretend, right, Natalie, I want you to pretend you've got the biggest, sparkliest ring on your finger. Right, and then Natalie decides to take the ring off, put it down, and go and wash her hands. Now I see the ring and I think, Oh, that's lovely. I like that ring. Pick it up, put it on, and then Natalie comes back. Where's my ring? Have you seen it? Now. Do I do? I could say, oh, Natalie, um, it's here. Um, I, it was so lovely and sparkly, and I, I just tried it on. I could take it off and give it her. Or I might say, I don't know where it is. That wouldn't be right, would it? What should I do? Well, I think I need to remember what it says in God's word. It says that we should take anything that doesn't belong to us. We should not steal. And I should realise that I've done something wrong. And when I've done that, I need to be ready to own up and say, um, actually, Natalie, I took your ring. And then I need to say, sorry. Sorry, Natalie. It is. That's OK. But you see, I should have just say sorry to Natalie. I have to say sorry to God too, don't I? I have to say, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I, I, I know I shouldn't have taken that ring, and I am really sorry. Please forgive me. And you know what? God forgives us because he loves us. That's why. And whatever we do, if we tell a lie, we take something that isn't ours, we are unkind to someone, we hurt someone, whatever we do, as long as we, we realise that we've done something wrong and then we need to own up to it and we need to say sorry and give it back, do something about it. But not only to the person, but we need to do that, say sorry to God as well. And he will forgive us because you see, God's, because of God's amazing love, he never stops loving us and he never gives up on us, even though we're always doing the wrong thing, we're not living how he wants us to live our lives. He never gives up on us with his amazing love. And in fact, it gets even better than that because God loved us so much. He sent his own son, Jesus, to be the rescuer and to die on the cross for us for our sins, for all the wrong things that we do. But I shouldn't really be talking about that because we've got to that bit yet in the rescue plan. <laughs> anyway, I think we should talk to God now and thank him for his amazing love. So would you like to pray Natalie? Yes. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing love. Thank you that you never stop loving us. Thank you never give up on us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right, well, it's time to go Natalie, don't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's a wrap.